50 past the hour. As the 2024 race for the White House heats up, Politico points out that while former President Trump has strong polling, problems are starting to pile up, noting, quote, even inside the campaign, advisors are acknowledging the uneven transition to the general election. Joining us now, former Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Julian Castro, also an MSNBC political analyst, and Stuart Stevens served as the chief strategist for Mitt Romney's 2012 campaign. He's a senior advisor to the Lincoln Project. So, Stuart, of all of the issues the, that Donald Trump is facing, they continue to pile up, and yet he's still very much in the running. Why do you think that is? Well, you know... Um... My image of the Trump campaign is somebody walking around with a paper bag full of water. Um, I don't think it's going to leak, but I think when this thing goes, it's going to go quickly. And I think there's a good chance that we're going to have a situation like 1980 in reverse, where Carter was tight with Reagan until the middle of October, and then kind of the bottom fell out for uh, Carter. People are just beginning to uh, focus on the fact, I mean, this is incredible. I can't believe I said this. I worked in this party almost 30 years. The Republican Party is led by a guy from Queens who can't make bail. That's a fact. So I think that's going to be very disturbing to people. Plus, there is no positive message inside the Trump campaign. It is a, a party of grievance and a campaign of grievance. And ultimately, there's a reason we haven't elected many presidents like that. It's exhausting. It's unattractive. It makes us feel bad to be involved in politics when it's about grievance. It doesn't lift us up. And I think all of that is going to be very telling, and um, it's a big problem for the Trump campaign. Hey, Julian, is there something you think Democrats could do differently to fine-tune their message specifically to talk about these things that Stewart was mentioning? Well, I think Trump's legal problems uh, and the fact that he's going more and more extreme in his rhetoric is turning people off. And so Democrats have to take advantage of that. I think there's a great opportunity here, especially with suburban voters, suburban voters outside of Philadelphia, outside of uh, Detroit, outside of uh, Milwaukee, uh, folks who could still perhaps go either way. Uh, one of the most interesting announcements I saw in the last few days, for instance, was bundlers for Nikki Haley choosing to now bundle and raise money for Joe Biden instead of Donald Trump. Send these signals that, look, Donald Trump is extreme. Uh, he you know, has all of these legal problems, literally could go bankrupt within the next few weeks. And so uh, I think that Democrats have to remain positive, have to offer a vision for the future, have to also take care of some of the issues with the base that Democrats have right now, but then have a strong opportunity to seize that middle from Donald Trump. And, Stuart, NBC News has new reporting that Florida Senator Marco Rubio has emerged as one of the top potential VP picks for Trump. How do you see that? You know, Marco Rubio is one of the sadder stories in American politics, and that's saying something. You know, let's not forget, this is a guy who was on the cover of Time magazine under the headline, Savior of Republican Party. And what he went out and said about uh, Donald Trump in 2016, when he was running against him, uh, that he would destroy the party, all of these things he said, he believes those things. And then Trump crushed him in his home state. And Trump just broke him. That's it. He's a broken man. So would Donald Trump pick this sad little figure who he uh, managed to dominate and has been out there saying these uh, things he, everybody in the world knows he doesn't believe as his vice president? Sure. The question for Marco Rubio is, I mean, seldom has it been said, well, you have the backbone of Mike Pence in the history of you know modern politics. But that's a question for Marco Rubio. And, Julian, I want to just get your thoughts on SB4 in Texas, your home state. Uh, we've been talking a lot about it, but it, it comes as new data demonstrates the significance of immigration for GOP voters. Is this something you think that will be a bigger issue come 2024, November? Well, I mean, there's no question that it's going to be one of the big issues, and that's why uh, President Biden and Democrats tried to address that issue. Like, I didn't agree with every single part of the legislation that was proposed and sent up to, to Congress, but Biden and Democrats have a strong argument to make here. Look, look, we tried to fix the problem. We tried to address it, and Republicans 
Uh, even though they talk a big game and they create a lot of fear about immigration, they were unwilling to actually solve the problem. Uh, so I think that uh, President Biden needs to continue to uh, assert that message, uh, show that he's working on this issue, show that he understands the concerns of border communities and, and is trying to do something positive about it and contrast that with Donald Trump that's just stoking fear talking about migrants as animals and talking in this uh, sometimes Hitler-esque way, uh, I, I believe that come November, the Democrats are going to uh, stand in better stead than maybe a lot of us have thought, um, because uh, the administration has been making that argument very strongly. We tried to solve it. You're not doing anything about it. Julian Castro and Stuart Stevens, thank you both so much. Really appreciate it.